Hey, what is going on YouTube? David here bringing you guys another YouTube video. Happy New Year's everybody! This is gonna be the first video that I make in the new year of 2023. I hope everybody had a great Merry Christmas and I hope everybody had a great New Year. I apologize, it's been a while since I uploaded. Work at the end of the year can be really hectic and can be really busy. I just couldn't get any videos out towards the end of the year last year, but now I am back. One of the things I'm gonna try to accomplish this year is to upload more often. It's gonna be a challenge because I also do have to balance a full-time job that is sometimes unpredictable in terms of the hours. So I do apologize. I actually have a lot of videos planned and content already recorded, but I just have so little time to go about editing them and uploading them and, and doing all that stuff. It's actually a lot of work. Anyways, excuses aside, let's get straight into today's video. And by the way, today's video is not a sponsored video. So a little bit of backstory on my tint for those of you who are new to my channel. I used to have Lumar Shadows 15% tint for my six side windows. During that time, when I first got my car, I just wanted to get the top of the line stuff for my car and I didn't want to get anything else but the best. So I did a lot of researching, just like any other person that just took delivery of their car, frantically searching what is the best tint for vehicles and everybody was recommending the Lumar Shadows Formula One tint. And although it's really expensive, I went ahead and I got it. I got it done at one of my local tint shops and they really messed up my car windows. My windows were actually damaged and stupid me, I actually didn't even notice it until months later. And fast forward a little bit, I'm now upset not only at my windows being damaged, but also because 15% was just way too light for me. I decided I actually wanted to go ahead and retint my whole car. Now my girlfriend has a white Model 3 and her car is actually tinted 10% on the whole thing, including the sunroof and also the back windshield. Long story short, I was unhappy with the first tint shop. They were refusing to fix my car or even admit fault. So I took it to another car tint shop local to me by the name of Signature Glass Tinting. I'm honestly pretty happy with the way that my car turned out and I'm also really happy with the way that I was treated. I'll just have some B-roll going on in the background showing everybody the tint comparison between the 10% on the white Model 3 and also my 5% now on the red Model 3. The white Model 3 has 10% all around nano ceramic film. The white Model 3 has 75% I believe or basically just clear on the front windshield. The red Model 3 has 5% all around 15% on the back windshield and 15% on the sunroof and 50% on the front windshield. Model 3 is actually black interior but I whited it out. I did a whole theme video on that a while ago. I'll leave a card for that video up here or it's up here and you guys can check it out. It's actually pretty neat. I basically whited out the whole car and I did a little bit of a theme on it. Anyways, so the purpose of demonstrating and comparing the tints, we both had white interior in our cars. So first off, let's address the safety concerns. Is 5% too dark to be used on all around on your car? Well, yes and no. The short of it is kind of yes. With 5%, you really won't be able to see out of your car very well once the sun goes down or in not ideal lighting situations. If anyone tells you otherwise, or if they claim that they can see perfectly out of 5% tint at night, they are bullshitting you. That is a lie. If you're driving down a dark street with barely any lights at night, you will not be able to see anybody that doesn't have headlights or anybody that is walking on the street at night. However, in the daytime, everything is bright, everything is clear, you can see everything. It just looks like clear tint during the day. However, your windows are still gonna be super dark so people can't see into your car, which is awesome. So at night, you either have to roll down your windows just a bit so you can see if you're making a turn or if you're at a stop sign, you're at a red light, etc., and you need to check for pedestrians. You will need to roll your windows down. I've learned this the hard way. There will be instances where I finish a left turn and then when I look back I was like oh crap there was actually a pedestrian there on the sidewalk. They weren't crossing the street but I actually saw them after I finished my turn so it's like if that person was actually walking I may have you know obviously I'm driving slow and I'm driving carefully but I could have potentially hit somebody so it's not the best for sure. I will roll down my windows when I'm driving through a neighborhood or whatever so that I can actually see fully 
and when I'm driving normally on the highway or whatever, I will roll my windows up and drive like normal. Sometimes if you look really, really hard out of the window, you may be able to see somebody or a shadow of somebody. Normally when you're driving, you're not able to turn your head, look outside of the window and check for pedestrians. Traffic conditions aren't always going to allow you to do that. You have to keep your eyes on the road. You can't just stop and start looking outside for pedestrians so you can make a turn. You can't do that. Another potential worrying concern for people is law enforcement, at least in the US. So far, knocking on wood, I have not been pulled over by any law enforcement officer or had any repercussions for window tint. Most police officers though, they don't really care, at least where I live, because almost everybody has almost limo tint on their cars. All the luxury cars around here, they all have dark tint, they all don't have front license plates, and the police just don't care. However, obviously I can't guarantee that nobody is ever gonna get pulled over for window tint because there definitely are a lot of people that get pulled over for window tint. Because the local tint shop that I went to, they actually told me that their customers come back because they get fixed the tickets all the time. I guess it's more of a risk versus reward type of thing. I'm totally gonna keep driving around with my 5%. I like it a lot. And if anybody is local to me, I would totally recommend signature glass tinting. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just trying to wholeheartedly recommend a good local tint shop. They are a family owned business and their the owners are there, their son is there. Everybody's really cool. They treated me really, really well. I won't go into too much detail of how they treated me well, but they were very kind to me and they helped me out a lot from my bad experience with the previous tin shop. Now for the good. The 5% is absolutely, in my opinion, gorgeous. I love the 5% for the matching of the front and the back. The privacy and overall just aesthetics of the car is through the roof. Traditionally, cars are not allowed to have any shade of tint on the front windows besides clear. However, nobody likes mismatching windows where you have totally clear on the front and super dark in the back. So everything dark and matching uniform is ideal, right? During daylight driving, it's almost impossible to see into the car from the outside. Even during really bright days or having the sun shining directly into my car from the outside, I still can't see into my car that much. I love the privacy that the darker tint has to offer. I will say though that 10% and 15% is a pretty good sweet spot. Maybe even 10 to 25% depending on your risk tolerance. I honestly think 15 is probably dark enough to satisfy most people. It's a good balance between aesthetics and also trying to stay in compliance with the law. However, if you're like me and want to live dangerously, I also like to live dangerously. I love the fact that I can drive around and nobody can see into my car and see what's in my car, which also could add to the safety too, because sometimes I'll have my electronics. Please don't rob me. People won't be able to see into my car, but I'll be able to look out of my car and see other people. It's kind of like a one-way mirror kind of a thing, which is really cool. When it comes down to it, if I could choose, or if I could choose again, I would probably still go with five or 10%. I will say, however, that because Teslas have so many windows and they're really spacious, I wanna say that a completely untinted or super light clear tinted Tesla looks absolutely gorgeous and classy as well. So there really isn't a right or wrong answer here, but it's more so of what type of look are you trying to go for for your car. I also purchased this protection plan. If I'm ever unhappy with my tint or if I actually get a fix a ticket, I can actually take my car into the tint shop and they will retint it for free no charge. So if your tint shop has something like this, I would probably take them up on that offer, especially if you're a little bit unsure about what you want. Wherever you go though, make sure you save the receipt and make sure you get a warranty for your tint. It could be a lifesaver sometime down the road. Let me know down in the comments below what your perspective on tint is. Should you go lighter? Should you go darker? What do you have on your cars? Let me know and let me know what you think between the five and the 10%. Do you even see a difference? I try to keep all the variables the same. I'm curious to know what your opinion are. I talk about my Tesla and I document my ownership experience and I also talk about some tech videos every now and then. I also plan on dabbling into finance a little bit. Anyways, subscribe to the channel if you thought the video was helpful, informative, or somewhat entertaining and thumbs up if you liked it. I hope everybody has a great day. This is David here signing off. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!